Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and this video is about associating fractions with division, which is on the Year 6 Primary National Curriculum. I think an easier way of describing this topic is that it's about dividing a smaller number by a larger number. So a typical calculation would be 2 divided by 5. Here's a quick reminder of our four ways of understanding division. And the first thing you need to notice is that in order to understand this topic, we have to be focusing on division as sharing fairly. So if you've got children in your class who prefer to count groups, count how many of the second number in the first number to solve their divisions, they are going to struggle. And you need to really, in a disciplined way, say we are sharing fairly today. Just as with the last video, which was dividing fractions by whole numbers, we're going to look at this with a circular representation of fractions and then a linear one. These topics are very similar, so similar, I'm even wearing the same jumper. Let's look at 2 divided by 5 with a circular representation. So imagine we've got two pizzas and we're trying to share them fairly between five people. You can set your children to work on this. It's really tough. The kind of conversations you'll see going on, children may cut these in half and then realise they've only got four halves, so there's not enough for each person, each of the five people to have one half. Therefore, the answer must be smaller than a half. So they might cut them into quarters and give everyone a quarter, and then they're left with this three quarters to share between five people. They could do that using the methods we used in the last video, but to embed them and subordinate them into this is tricky, and then they've got to add fractions. They may try cutting these pizzas into thirds and giving everyone a third. So one, two, three, four, five thirds. Everybody gets a third. And then we're left with this third to share between five people. And it's reasonable they could work out that everyone gets a third and a f this is a fifteenth for each person. So you get a third plus a fifteenth and then they can practice their adding of fractions and they'll find a single fraction answer. It's all really convoluted, but it's great to investigate and it's a great challenge to set getting children working in groups. Some can draw diagrams, some can work with these pizza parts, which come in Learning Resources Pizza Fraction Fun, which I recommend. But there's an insight here that makes it all much easier. Let's just have another go at this in a slightly different way. And that insight is that if you cut each of your pieces into this many parts, it all becomes much easier. So if we cut these into fifths, my fifths aren't brilliant, but hopefully they're good enough for you to follow. And each of your five people who are sharing these pizzas gets a slice from this one and a slice from this one then the answer is two fifths. There's enough there for each of those five people to have a fifth from that pizza and a fifth from that pizza. It's much nicer than the other methods. Although the ultimate is for your children to wrestle with those other methods and come to the same conclusion and link all those conclusions together. Great maths going on there. Let's look at another calculation where you're dividing a smaller number by a larger number. This one is 5 divided by 6. We can do this again. Let's draw 5 pizzas and try and share them out fairly. And over a few questions, children should come to recognise that they want to split every pizza into that many parts and then it's going to be easy. Because each of your six people can go round and take a slice of pizza from each pizza. And that's going to be fair for all the other five people to do exactly the same thing. Therefore, the answer to that question is five sixths. Five divided by six is five sixths. Or you can read it the other way. Five sixths is five divided by six. 
and you want to continue to work on questions like this until you get to tricky ones like 7 divided by 13, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pizzas and you can quickly see you want to divide every pizza into 13 parts. Very difficult to draw, let's just imagine it. That one's in 13 parts, so are all the others. Each of those 13 people can come around and take one thirteenth of pizza from each pizza and therefore they get seven thirteenths of a pizza when they put all their individual thirteenths back together. That's what they've got. And at that point, we can see this generality. When you're dividing a smaller number by a larger number, the dividend, that's the number you're dividing, becomes the numerator of your answer. and The divisor becomes the denominator of your answer. Now let's look at this with a linear representation of fraction because it's great for children to see maths in two ways. Somehow when they do that, it goes a level deeper into their understanding when they make the connections between the two different representations. So our first question was two divided by five. Let's draw a bar that's two units long. That's the two that we're starting with and we want to divide it by five. Well, we could split each one into five and take one from each section. It's quite nice just to do horizontal lines. We had two, we're sharing it fairly between five people. We can imagine our five people here, 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 here. And each person gets this much. That's one fifth and another fifth. So the answer is two fifths. The second question we looked at with our pizzas, our circles was five divided by six. Let's look at that now with a linear representation. We start with five and it's easiest to share it with, between six people with horizontal lines. This is one person's share here. Each of these is one sixth and they've got five sixths. So it's five sixths. And so it goes on and you can make the same generalisation as before. In algebra, it turns into if you have A divided by B, it becomes A over B. A nice way of consolidating this is to explore how a lot of notation, instead of writing a division, 3 divided by 7, that is actually written as 3 over 7. You'll find that in Excel and in other spreadsheet calculations. So if you come up with an exercise where your children have to enter calculations in that way, you're using the identity of the division and the fraction as being the same thing. Now we can use that to convert fractions into decimals, which is another year six teaching point. So let's do that now. If we start with a fraction, two fifths, well, we looked at that being equal to 2 divided by 5. They are the same thing. So if we set up the calculation of 2 divided by 5, how many 5s in 2? None. So we have to continue beyond the decimal point. Carry that 2. So we have 20 here. How many 5s in 20? Oh, 4. It's worked out. 0 0.4. So 2 fifths is... 0 0.4. Let's try a slightly harder one. What about 7 eighths? 7 eighths, that is 7 divided by 8, which we can set up like this. How many eighths in 7? None. So we're going to have to continue beyond the decimal point. Got 7 to carry. How many eighths in 70? Well, Eight eights are 64. I ate and I ate till I was sick on the floor. Eight eights are 64. So we have eight. We've used 64, so we have six left. How many eights in 60? Well, seven eights are 56. 56 is seven eights. Sorry, steps era. So we get seven eights are 56, and we have four left over. How many eights in 40? Last we're out, it's five. 0 0.875, we have that equivalence. Of course, not all fractions convert that perfectly. Some lead to recurring decimals, but that's beyond us in year six, so you don't need to worry about that. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so that you get notifications when I publish new videos. Please tell your teacher friends or any parent friends who might find this useful about these videos. I publish videos every week working through teaching the whole of the primary maths curriculum. This video isn't in that series. I haven't actually got to year six yet, but I've just done it because somebody asked for it. Please do post your questions and your comments either below this video on YouTube or on Facebook in the Expert Primary Maths Teacher Planning Facebook group. And I will do my best to respond to all your questions and meet your needs so that you can be a fantastic primary maths teacher who deeply understands everything. Please, please do leave some comments. I'm taking time out from working in schools to make these videos and it means I'm often home alone. And as we say in Cumbria, I really miss the crack. For those of you who aren't into Cumbrian dialect. I'm not talking about hard drugs, I'm talking about the gossip. Good luck with all the challenges you face in year six teaching. Huge respect to you. I'll leave you with links to the other videos I've created this week for maths teaching in year six and a circular link where you can subscribe to this channel and find it again in the future. Bye for now.